My name is Maurice Velasquez. And I'm John Shirk. And this is Winning in the Workplace. Powered by Team Real World. Welcome to Winning in the Workplace. Gordy Rush, John Shirk, Maurice Velasquez. Did I hit it? <laughs> you got the V correct. <laughs> you say it for me. Velasquez. Maurice Velasquez. There you go. Hey, That's there pretty it is. good. Hey, there that it is. sounded even better than is. I said it. There you go. It only took us 27 shows for me to get it right. I nailed it. <laughs> Is, uh, they're from Team Real World. We we talk about everything workplace. These guys, two of the best in the business. And guys, the last couple of weeks we've talked about, uh, you know, that initial meeting. Companies getting right. the frontliners to open up, give you the stuff, find out uh, what is keeping a particular business from hitting on all cylinders. And mm-hmm. once you get that stuff out, the next thing is 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 getting everybody aligned and. I think you guys put out that there's six different roles. Is yes. that right? Yes. Six roles yeah, exactly. in which uh, the the people play right. in this whole alignment. Yeah, mm-hmm. because see, if if um, if the actors or, or let's just use the football analogy because I think it's a good one. If if the quarterback decides to be a linebacker, well, who's going to be quarterback? Right. If the linebacker decides to be a wide receiver, um, okay, right. who's, who's the wide receiver? I know enough football that linebackers stink at quarterbacks. <laughs> That's right. That ain't so work. It, it's amazing. We look at sports and we look at performers and we go, man, look at that symphony. They're all just it's, – it's, that was a wonderful show. Why? Because yeah. everybody played their instrument mm-hmm. and they played it in conjunction with the others. But if the, if the guy playing the bass decides that he wants to go play the drums – and the guy playing the drums decided he wants to play the saxophone. Well, you're just going to mess things up. So everybody needs to know their role and play their role really well with the rest of the team members. And that's what a team's about. So we can have all those employee meetings and not find out from the employees, all right, guys, what's bothering y'all? You're going to get a whole lot of stuff. Then we fix them. Six weeks later, guess what's going to happen? They're going to tell you the same things over and over again because everybody keeps getting on each other's role. In other words, everybody gets out of alignment all over again. Right. So in order to uh, keep improving the issues and the problems that come up, you have to. we have to have this conversation. What are the roles that you're trying to get everybody to align to, and what does that mean? Right. And, 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 and another piece of this whole puzzle, too, is that once someone really understands what that role is, that's and they stay in it, that's what allows them to get good at it. Right. You know? Right. Because the first time you go up to the bat, you're going to swing. It's going to feel clunky. If the first time you go to a manager and you say, really, listen, they're going to try. and it's, You know, it's a little clunky. But when you do it and you stay in your role and you do it over and over and over again, that creates a whole organization that gets just Correct. really good at execution. Well, let's talk about what the roles are. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Uh, you basically have three key players in every company. In every company, you can have lots of different different titles, but ultimately you have three types of players. You have a group that's called the executives, regardless of what you call them. They're the guys right. at the top, okay? Yep. The second group is the middle managers. You can have three, four, five, six layers of those guys. doesn't matter. It's the, it's the middle managers. And then you have the frontliners. Those are the team members that, uh, that are closest to the customer. What's interesting is sometimes the uh, the owners are frontliners because if you're, for example, a law firm and I'm an owner, but I'm also a frontliner taking care of clients, I wear two hats. But for the sake of simplicity, let's just decide that, that, that the roles we're talking about is the group that's the executives, the groups that's the middle managers, and the group that's the frontliners. Right. <clears throat> and again, each of them has their own role. And, right. Uh, the uh, we could dive in at the beginning where yeah let's go ahead and start at the first the first uh, the, the first trigger point let's call it right is when the executive group begins to speak in terms of outcomes and goals that's their role yeah. their role is for them to speak in terms of what they want to see happen okay so for example but it's got to be in the terms of rate it's 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 it numbers we want to see the company grow by twenty percent we want to increase our advertising by this we so want it's, to, it's not a thought it's got to be something that's measurable that's exactly. right and okay. that's why we have to encourage all of you executives out there uh, if, if right now, the time that we're recording this happens to be the fourth quarter of the year, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, right now, at the end of the year, is a perfect time for executive teams to get together and say, we need to have our strategic meeting. Yes. Uh, yesterday, we helped uh, one of our clients uh, yeah. do one of two sessions. So yesterday was the first session. Next week's going to be the second session. And they came together for three and a half, four hours. And uh, when they left there, one of them said, man, that was an awesome meeting. And the other one said, but, dude, that was like heavy labor. That was heavy lifting. Yeah. <laughs> and they were so proud of themselves yeah. because as executives, they put up a ton of stuff on the boards. And we facilitated what they want to do with their with their uh, middle managers, what they want to do as a company, how much do they want to grow. Uh, and we helped them to focus their conversation on numbers and measurable outcomes. And every time they wanted to dig into how the manager should do it, 
We constantly told them, no, 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 guys, no, no, That's you right. guys are executives. Outcomes and goals. What are the measurable things you guys want to see happen? And they covered a lot of ground. Yeah, they, they're interesting because they're right at the point in the organization where there's they can't kind of co-manage anymore. Right. They, they need that manager. And very group to quickly, step up. companies get there. So yeah. the, the the role that we're talking about here is for the executives to learn to speak more and more in terms of goals and outcomes. The reason they don't and they want to get into the weeds is because they're not comfortable that the managers are going to do their role. So let's talk about that. Right. Okay. What is the role of the managers? Well, the manager is their first function is to hear those goals and organize those. Things. Correct. And by organizing, it means uh, creating a game plan. Uh, it means uh, under breaking out the goal. Well, actually, the very first thing it means is sitting down with the executive and saying, "What do you? I mean heard you say this. What do you mean? What by do you that? mean by this? Yeah. So, so for, uh, for example, hey, we read in your executive uh, in your executive plans that you guys want to expand into two offices. Where? Where do you guys want to expand? How fast do you want to expand? You know, it's it's getting that clarity from the executives so that we can then say, okay, wow. All right, so if you guys want to do that, thanks, guys. Yeah. Then the managers need to get together and say, all right, guys, did everybody hear that? <laughs> let's, yeah. get, let's get organized as to what that means, and the managers have to then come up with a game plan of what it means for all the different departments to execute that. We haven't yet implemented, right? okay, but we have to begin to create a game plan on how we're actually going to get that done. That's right. And that game plan then begins to go to the third role. Right. And that's the frontliners. Right. All right. So if we know that we're going to do a lot of different expansions and we know what the game plan is, well, what the managers should do is talk to each other. All right. But then the managers need to also go talk to the frontliners mm -hmm. and say, hey, guys, heads up. Right. This is where we're headed. <laughs> okay. Right. Give us your feedback. Tell us the plus, the negatives. How are we going to do this? And that's when I tell you. Everywhere we go, the, the, the frontliners are, first of all, surprised that they're being asked to participate oh, yeah. in a strategic game plan. Yeah. You know, it, it's really cool whenever we do this with clients, the, the employees are like, do they really want to hear what we say? <laughs> yes, yeah. we want to hear what you say. Yeah. Because they don't only hear about your problems that we're trying to fix, but they also want to hear what would work and what didn't work if we get this done. And the feedback comes back, and the managers are the ones that have put together that game plan. So now... Uh, that takes a while. That usually, if you do it right, it's going to take about a month to two months to align everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, but then when you start implementing, that's the role of the frontliners. The role of the frontliners is to implement the processes and implement the customer service or whatever it is, the initiatives that were decided, their role is to implement and provide extraordinarily good customer service. That's right. And and when that time comes, you know, problems happen. The, the, yeah. one, of the, one of the basic fundamental realities of life is that when you begin to execute, something gets screwed up. Yeah, we often joke and say, this is where the client comes in and he plays his role. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the client starts being demanding. Yeah. They, they, they want to do business with you. Mm, you right. know what I'm saying? And li life is what life is, man. There's there's this there's disagreement. Uh, you know, one drive-through is doing it a certain way in in Homa, then the other the same company has another drive-through in uh, in Beaumont, and they're not doing the same way. There's those are problems. Yeah. So when the executive speaking goals, the managers organize, and the frontliners implement, everyone has to understand that it is reasonable for there to be disagreement and there to be disconnection. There needs to be uh, what's the best word. Um, uh, inconsistencies, ah, you yeah, know that that, right. that, that we, you know that we didn't catch everything, and that we we try to implement too fast or whatever. Sure. Problems are going to arise, so that's that's a reasonable expectation, right? Okay, then what do you do with that? Then the role of frontliners at that point is communicate those challenges. What are is this the 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 metaphor we always use is the the shovel with the wiggly handle, right? If that frontliner is supposed to go behind this building and dig holes, and his handle is wiggly on his shovel. What happens right after that is going to say a lot about the effectiveness of that whole company. We I had a, we had a client today. Uh, I didn't tell you about it. We were oh, on okay. our way on yeah. the way to hear the recording. I got a client that said, "Hey, Maurice, uh, we have two new employees. We want to train them." And I asked her, All right, "So tell me what they do." And it started tell me, you know, uh, the different job descriptions. And I said, "Well, let me ask you this: Would you say they're managers? They're being groomed to managers, or they're being groomed to become extremely good frontliners?" And she said, "Oh, that's a good way to put it. See." By, by showing mm -hmm. the roles, we helped right. her make the decision. Um, and she said, well, you know what? I think there's potential here for managers, but no, their role, and I was like, all right, she's already talking the language. <laughs> she said her, their role for the next two years is to be the most 
fascinatingly, extremely good frontliners you can help me produce. We'll come back with this and catch us on the on the other, on the other segment. Is that all right? Absolutely, absolutely. Because yeah. we got plenty more. So, so real quick, recap, recap of six roles, yes. real quick, and we'll come. Number back one, and- executives need to speak in terms of goals. Uh, number two, the manager organizes those goals. Then third, the frontliners implement and assume their problems are going to come up. And the then the then the frontliners are to communicate up the mm-hmm. problems. Okay. The managers function as air traffic control to to, to, to direct how to fix the problems mm-hmm. and whatever needs to go up to the to the executives. The executives' role is to execute any decisions and keep that that rhythm that that consistency over and over again. We got more to come on this, so continue to listen to the show to the podcast. You can hear more on that real quick. New website, John Shirk, winningintheworkplace.com dot com is the best site on the net to get quality cutting edge management training right at your fingertips short videos very helpful winning in the workplace.com and in fact this is the name of the program winning in the workplace i'm gordy rush john shirk maurice velasquez that was close enough that was perfect man (laughs) winning in the workplace is the most practical and results driven training to increase your skills as a professional manager and leader so are you ready to win in your workplace Visit www.winningintheworkplace.com.